Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Larry the Garden Fairy, coming to you from Duluth, Minnesota, Zone 4B. What we're going to be doing today is uh, working on that anxiety you feel when you walk into a nursery and you're not really sure what you want to do. So today I'm going to talk about shade-loving plants. The first uh, little hint I can give you is just Google the following things. Zone four hardy shade perennials. That's it. It'll give you 20 of them. Look through them. Try to find diversity in the leaf structure and the colors so that you're getting some uh, great visual interest. And then uh, pick out your favorites and stick to it. Stay away from people like me. <laughs> because I'm going to be over your shoulder going, oh, Oh, have you tried these? They're my new favorite. So stay with what you got. Start with three or four different kinds of plants and work with it. And that's something that you can repeat throughout your landscaping if you have a bunch of different shade areas. And it gives you a cohesive look. So this is what I've got for you today. We're going to start here with the caladiums. You guys, these are beautiful. They haven't opened up. The big one hasn't. I'll give you a look at the smaller one here. Isn't that just wonderful, you guys? And that you can see the red veining in the leaves will get more pronounced as it gets to be bigger, like this here. This is called the White Queen. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, right next to that, this is something I should tell you before you get involved in caladiums. You will have to harvest the bulbs at the end of the season and winter them. Uh, these are something that I started a month and a half ago. You guys, they're slow starters. They need heat, so you can't do it unless you have a heat mat. Um, but yeah, they've been sitting on heat mats for a month and a half, and that's where we're at. My second, this is the plant I'm going to be standing next to you in the nursery saying, you really should use these, use these. Uh, Brunera or Brunera, whichever way you choose to pronounce it, I'll understand what you're saying. This is the, the variety Sea Heart. And here, this is where you're going to get the blue color. This silver here in gardening uh, is actually a shade of blue when you put it in a landscaping interest. So you look at the shape of this leaf, the shape of this leaf, the shape of this leaf. We have a very similar uh, leaf structure going on, but I already have plants in the garden there that are going to give us some airy, whimsical uh, feeling. The third one here, and oh, by the way, this hosta is called Sum and Substance. This hookra or corbel, whichever you prefer, you guys, uh, is called the Grande Amethyst. Look at the coloring in that leaf. I'll get it out of the sun and let you see a better look at it here. There you go. Doesn't that look great? But then you back up and you look at all of it together and you get a nice color change. And uh, so I've set up where I'm going to be planting this morning. So why don't you take a walk with me? I'm going to grab the burner up because that needs to be placed over there. And... Here we go. This is the area over here where we have our shade garden. Walk with me. Yep. And this is where it's all gonna be going, right over here. It's this uh, Japanese maple here pretty much starts shading the rest of it here in the afternoon. Um, this gets this nice morning sun. Uh, it's probably about 11 maybe a little later than that right now. And then this is the area right down in here. So you can see that I've placed the sum and substance hosta here. What's gonna happen is there's three of them. One's gonna go up by the fence, one in the middle, and one over here. When you're planting, one of the things that you really need to get used to is the fact that uh, you're gonna be moving stuff around. This was put in last year, I've changed my mind. 
because we moved the nine back here with the nice red coloring. I thought a chartreuse pop underneath it because this is going to be darker when it fills in um, would just stand out so much more. But these are all going to be dug up uh, right down to the uh, lamb's ear here. That's going to stay. So we'll have a nice rim around the nine bark. The corbels here are going to be dug up and relocated. You see I've got my amethyst, uh, grande amethyst hookra or corbel, whichever you prefer, up against the white fence. So you're going to get a nice pop there. Uh, then down here is where the caladiums are. You guys, there's three, four clumps in each of the planters there. And what I do when I'm doing a project like this is I try to visualize. You know, this fern is going to get another foot or two taller. It's going to cover a little bit more, but it's still going to leave a gap right up uh, by the fence there. And those big leaf, white, red, green, are just going to come right through here. I'm going to start them up here, run them right down through here, and then finish it out up here. And that's what they call a wave of plants in planting. And what that does, instead of just plopping, uh, taking six of those and going one here, one here, one here, one here, it gives you visual interest in a group. If you like the real, uh, the real busy, everything's everywhere look, then that, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. For me, I like the bunny that's right here decided to come and join us well, he wants to be a star of the planting. Oh, and he wants part of my hosta. No, go on, get, get, get. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. What timing, he is a camera hog. All right, so uh, again, back to the caladium. That'll give you a nice drift of the same color. You bring it down through here. So I'm gonna swoop it down a little fatter through here and then just up a ways about a foot or two up the hill. The foxglove there will be just fine. It'll grow in around the rest of it. The begonias here I've got placed out four of them at the front of the uh, uh, garden here just so that I'm gonna have a nice color pop. This here is a uh, I can't remember the name of it. Let me see if it's on the other one. No, here it is. This is the Netja Dark Pink. We'll get it where you can see it. This is sun to part shade. So um, in Duluth, we don't have as direct a sun as you're gonna have down in the Minneapolis area. So. Uh, this could take a little bit of the direct afternoon sun, but when something says sun part shade, I try to do my best at keeping it out of direct afternoon sun. It's really hard on your plants. So something shading it, you know, put a pot next to it, whatever you can do to create it. So these are going to be spaced out along the edging here, just to give you a nice little color, because this is mainly foliage, you guys. So. That's what I've got set up. That's how I go about doing a shade garden. Uh, the Brunera here is going to go right up in the area where the other one is so that I have a bigger effect of it. And then the other Caladiums that you can see here are going to start by the Brunera over in the corner between the Bleeding Heart, come down around the maple tree, up a ways, and then down to where it's sitting. So it'll just be a nice, we'll have two of them. As you're walking, you'll see it here. It'll bring your eye right over into here. And that just works the best for uh, setting up a, a visually pleasing garden. So this is Larry the Garden Fairy. If you have questions, please ask. Um, you know, if, if you do things differently and it works for you, let me know. I just want to share information. I want everyone that has a, a fear of gardening to get over it. Take your first step. Go spend a hundred bucks, and I mean, really, honestly, a hundred bucks. What's that? McDonald's ten times, or like three times 
out for dinner <laughs> at most. But, you know, uh, give it a try. But look at the tags. Make sure you, if you're getting a shade loving plant that doesn't like to be wet, that you're not putting it next to a shade loving plant that likes to be dry. So, you know, they'll give you all of the information on these tags. Set them up together in the nursery. Look at them. You know, these are shade dry. These are shade wet. Put them together. When you do shade wet, what, what's that going to do for you? It's going to increase your workload. So you're going to have to water a bit more. If you want to make it nice and easy, do drought tolerant. You can find it in all shade, all sun, sunshade, you name it. But like I said, this is Larry the Garden Fairy saying goodbye. Hope you have a great day. Love you guys.